and welcome to this AE Basics Extra, in which we're going to look at doing a little bit of extra text animation. We're going to make this word caterpillar act like a caterpillar and crawl across the screen. Now all I've done is create the word caterpillar and I've used small caps with a you know, large cap and small caps just to stop the P from coming below the line because really to make this work I want a straight line at the bottom. But the first thing I want to think about is how I want the caterpillar to look. I would rather it had a smaller tail than its head. And to be able to do that, I need to go into the actual text layer itself and change an animator in there. So here is my text layer. I'm going to open it up. And next to the word text, I've got the word animate. I'm going to click the word animate. And I'm actually going to animate scale. Now, by default, scale is applied equally along all the letters. So if I was to take it down to, say, 40%, I'm actually going to click and type 40, you'll notice that all of the letters are equally affected and they're now scaled down to 40%. Whereas we want the beginning letters to be large and the end letters to be small. We can actually change that inside the range selector that we've created. So this is the animator that we created to deal with scale. But there's also a range selector. And if you open up the range selector, you'll see that you've got an option that says advanced. And when you open up advanced, you'll see that you've got something down here called shape. By default, shape is at square, which means it affects everything evenly, like a square wave. However, we've got lots of different patterns that we can use. For example, ramp up, which gives us a ramp from the beginning down to the end, which is actually pretty much what we're looking for. There are other options. We've got ramp down, which we'll do it the other way, or alternatively things like triangle, which kind of goes in and out, and then a sort of a smoother version of triangle called round. And finally, smooth which is just a slightly different version of the same thing but the one that we clearly want is going to be ramp up and then we can play with the ease high and the ease low to change the overall look of it so for instance I might want quite a few of these letters to be about the same shape and actually only the tail to be affected so if I play with the ease high and I take it actually negative slightly you'll see that I'm creating a movement so that these ones are, are, are closer and you can actually play with ease low as well. If you take ease low in the opposite direction, you also get a similar ability to be able to change that so that the scaling is really happening mainly down here. So we've got a body which is pretty straight all the way and then your tail at the bottom. You can actually reduce that a tad. There we go. So we've got a slightly better look to the line that we're putting through it. So it's fairly similar up to this point and then a gentle line down there. So we've actually changed the look of the text by using scale and the advanced options for the animator that that created. So I'm just going to shut that down. If you want to, you can even rename the animator. So if you want to get back to it later, select where it says animator 1, hit enter, and we can just call this shape. And hit enter again, so that we know that that is dealing with the shape of our text. The next thing we need to do is create a path that this text can be locked to and animate the path. So we need to think about how it's going to crawl across. And the way a caterpillar moves is its head would stay stable, and then its tail would pull in, and its back would curve. And then when it was fully curved, its tail would stay stable, and its head would move across, and its body would drop. Now, to be able to work out roughly how that should look, I'm going to create some guides. And I'm going to use this button down here to find my rulers. And now I can drag out guides from how this should look. Now, firstly, I'm going to give myself a floor. This is roughly where I want it to go between. And how high do I want it to arch? Let's say we want it to arch to about there. Because we're going to find that our path is going to be very happy to snap to this kind of guide. Then I want some guides. So I'm going to put a guide at the beginning at the end of my window. Now, I'm going to do this very quickly. Usually, I would be spending a lot more time on the ruler to work it out. So I'm just going to very quickly and very roughly drag this out to save time. But you can spend plenty of time actually working this out and getting a, a perfect look. So please ignore my, my shoddiness in just doing something very quickly here. I'm trying to get these things roughly even. And I'm probably also... Uh, I have to do. And I'm probably also going to put one out here. Possibly another out there as well. Actually, I'm going to have to move that in a second. I'm going to put one this side as well, about there. And possibly, I'm holding the, the space bar, by the way, to get the hand tool. And I can pull another one out to a there. And the space bar again to get that hand tool. And I can pull that one out. Actually, I've got one already, so I can just drag that one out. 
and pull this one here. So I've now got the spaces, hold the spacebar again to just move your pan your, your screen around. So I've now got the, the intervals that I'm going to roughly use and I'm ready to create my mask. Now you click on the layer itself, take the pen tool and we just want three points. And I'm just going to click and drag and as I drag I'm going to hold the shift key to constrain it. Then I'm going to click and drag again, again holding the shift key to constrain it and a third time click and drag holding the shift key and you want these points to be roughly the same length as your text so I'm just going to take my selection tool and just pull this bottom one out holding the shift key again so it's about the same length as my text that's about right to me certainly that'll do for now now I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to select all of those points and then I'm going to click on the path and I'm going to drag it off screen to about there and now I'm going to click away and by the way if your path completely disappears don't panic just go back to where it says masks on your layer and actually click on the word masks and you actually get your points back and what I want to do is I just want to select click on the mask and mask path and I just want to select one of these points so I want that point there and I can just click and drag it and it snaps to that point click and drag that one it snaps to that point I know they're not perfectly balanced but what the heck I have to do for now so now we've got three points snapped to grids and we're ready to start our animation and what we're actually going to do is we're going to animate the mask path so I'm going to click the stopwatch for the mask path at zero and I'm going to go four to one second I'm just going to click in here and type one point enter takes me to one second and then I'm going to make sure I select just the middle point here and take that up until it hits the line in the middle and then pull that one across and then I'm going to look at the shape now is that too bendy or is that not bendy enough so I can take the handles and I can pull them in to create more or less of a bend on the paths that I'm working on. Okay, So you can play around with these handles. Click on the point to make sure you've got the handles. So you can play around with the handles to try and get the overall feel for how you want something to look and how you want it to work. So I think that's, that's probably going to do for what we want at the moment. So that's going to be the path that we're going to have looking at. And let's just quickly snap the text to the path and check we're happy with that. So you can see path options here. Click on those and open up the path options and click mask one. Is caterpillar going to fit on there? Well, the C certainly at the top. It might have gone off the end. We can't really see at this point. So let's move on a couple of stages. Take that back to none. And let's go on to two seconds. So two point. And then take this point and take the first point and drag it out click on mask path and then just make sure that you've just got one point so I've clicked away and then I've now got the first point I can take that to there and I can take the middle point to there and let's just have a little look at what we've got so far so it's going up and across and down so if I go to three seconds now three point enter again I can take that middle point and take that up to the middle take this point and pull it across let's just have a little look at that so space bars pulling up cross and down up okay and you get the idea so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video I'm going to go four point I'm just going to do this last one and then I'm going to pause the video and go from there so I'll just play that through show you what we've got and actually before I do the rest let's just check we're happy by snapping again the text to the path now that we can see it all yeah, Caterpillar pretty much is going to work for us, I think. That R will be okay at the end. Right, so what I'll do now is I'll pause the video and I'll finish going through my timeline so it's gone right the way across the screen to the other side. And I'll be back with you in just a moment. So there you go. It's taken 17 seconds to go right the way across. So let's just go to the home and just have a quick look at this as it goes across. It's going up and of course it's snapping to these grid points which is really helping us as it crawls across the screen. If it's the wrong speed, we can always play with that a bit later on. Okay, so that's going to go all the way across to the other side. Now let's just snap that text back again, go to the path options, back to mask one. And let's just zoom in a bit and have a little closer look. And actually you can turn off these guides if they're getting in the way, which they are for us. Let's just turn off the guides and have a little look. That tail, that R's fine going behind. And then by the time it gets to 17 seconds, that caterpillar is going to pretty much get all the way off screen. There you go. So that's our caterpillar going across screen. The only other thing that we might want to do is kind of have the, the letters 
rounding up on each other, going together and apart as we're going through the animation. And to do that, we need to add another animator. So I'm going to go up to Caterpillar at the top, and I'm going to click Animate, and I'm actually this time going to go for Tracking. And click on Tracking, and then I'm going to go down to this one here, and I'm going to enter, and I'm going to call this Tracking, so that I know what it is. And I'm going to look at Tracking, and if you pull Tracking out like this, you can see what we're doing is we're pulling the letters in and out. But what we need to do, I'm just going to take that back to zero at the moment, is we need to create a range that we're happy with. So open up the range selector and choose start and end. And you can see that at the moment we're including all of the text. So I'm going to click on the end one. I'm just going to pull it in to the point where it's only affecting three letters, cat. And then I'm going to take it negative, I think, so that they're all a bit closer. Okay, and then I'm going to look at offset. So, so at the moment these three letters are inside our range and they're all a lot smaller and this is the range that's selected so 0 at start end at 27 and offset is going to pull it along the line so we get that kind of pulling together of the body look so what I can do is just take it completely off screen to that point which is for me minus 30 go right to the very beginning and I'm just going to click the offset stopwatch and then I'm going to go forward to one second just make sure I'm over that keyframe here which I am and then I'm going to pull it all the way through to the other side, which is going to be quite hard for me to see because it's off screen. So let's just pull it through and let's just see if we can see it going all the way across. Yes, you can see it. So we just need to go all the way till they're both off, which is there. It should be 100%, so that's easy to do. And then I'm going to go to two seconds, and I'm going to use the keyframe navigator down here to make sure I'm over it at two seconds. Click, and I'm going to take that first keyframe, and I'm going to copy, control C, command C, paste so that it's going through one way and then back through the other. You can't really see it, but what we want to do is make it go all the way down the timeline. So let's use an expression to make it go all the way down our timeline so we don't have to keep copying and pasting these keyframes. Alt click on offset and let's just type loop out L O O P capital O U T open brackets speech marks cycle speech marks close brackets enter on your number pad and now what it's going to do is it's going to loop out these three keyframes all the way down the timeline so if I hit spacebar let's just uh, put this up let's turn off rulers as well we don't need rulers and let's just have a little look and see how that looks and let's just click away so that we don't have to see all these uh, bits and pieces And there we've got kind of a caterpillar moving through. So that's caterpillar text. Obviously there's more you can do. You can play with it. You can change its colours as it's going through. Perhaps one little thing that we can show you. Keep the tracking one open. And we click add. What you can do is you can add to this particular property. And so if I went to property. I could add say. I don't know. A fill colour. Or maybe a stroke colour. The moment I've got a blue stroke. Let's just change the blue stroke. From red well, it's red. Actually, let's leave it at red, so that when it pulls through, we're going to have a red bit going backwards and forwards. So let's just have a little look at that. Let's click away again so that we don't have to see everything that's going on. So you can play, but the idea behind this is to create some moving text, some caterpillar text, that moves across the screen. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to do another AE Basics, and I'm going to look at doing butterfly text which is in many ways very similar to this, but we're going to use a few more techniques, including motion sketch and 3D, so that we can have butterfly text flying around the screen and uh, having a bit of fun with that. My name's Andrew Davis. I hope you found this tutorial useful, and thanks for watching.